Welcome back to Tech Days Online. We're uh, live here at Future Decoded in our, in our little pod. Um, I'm joined by Jen Syrup. Jen is one of our UK data platform MVPs, so Microsoft Value Professional. And uh, we're, thank you very much for joining us. And you're going to talk to us all about Power BI for the CEO. I am. First of all, I want to say thank you very, very much to Amy for looking after me today and Claire and the rest of the team and everyone at Future Decoded who's been really nice in getting me here today. So I'm really happy to be here. Yes, now, the topic really interests me. I found in my career trajectory that I was dealing more and more with C-level executives. Right. And the reason is I think there's a really popular trend at the moment. People, uh, amongst them, senior executives, they know that they can do things with the data, but they're not quite sure what. Yeah. And I think sometimes they're starting to understand they can have access to it now. So I find I'm just being asked more and more from C-level executives who are finding they're sometimes having problems getting the data that they'll need in order to run their businesses. So um, I've got a um, PowerPoint uh, deck here. I won't PowerPoint you all to death, so please don't worry. Um, I'll take this one. Sorry. Come yeah, on. there we go. There we go. Yeah, yeah, that's us. So first of all, uh, thank you very much to everyone. So what I'd really like to talk about is how businesses can uh, go through a process of digital transformation using Power BI as a way of really getting an impetus behind business change. Now, you don't make a change until you, you don't get a change until you make a change. And that's very, very true with data. In fact, I spoke to a customer yesterday who says that um, they know they want to get, they've got lots of data but um, they're finding customers within the, the business users and the organization are um, empiring their data, so they're all holding on to little Excel worksheets everywhere. Yeah. They're not actually sharing their data sources. So I'm actually kicking off a project at the moment whereby we're going to try and get you know, one at a time, these data sources, bring them into SQL Server, look after them, give them the love they deserve, because yeah. they deserve love. A bit um, neglected a little bit, maybe. There's yes. one under Susan's desk over here, and yeah, one over, yeah, bring it together makes it more powerful, right? It does, and I don't know if you've ever read any in Andy Grove's book. Andy yeah. Grove, it's really, really interesting, and he talks about an inflection point for businesses, and what that really means is businesses go through like a childhood and adolescence maturity, and certain organisations, when they start off, they are quite young and everyone's got their own little pots of data and their own little processes that they sort of um, they look after. <laughs> but what we find is after a certain length of time that breaks down, because you can't be like the Power BI person or the SQL Server person or um, the Performance Point person, the SharePoint person, you need to start to share knowledge yeah. because simply that model isn't scalable. So um, with their data specifically, we, uh, organizations go through an adolescence and CEOs in particular are trying to work out well how do I move my organization from childhood into more adolescence uh, going through that reflection point and one way that they actually do that is uh, through a digital transformation process and that's where they need to start to focus more on strategic decisions to take the organizations to the next level further into the future. And to do that, they really need to understand a few very key metrics in order to take their business to the next level. So I want to talk about those metrics and I'll show you how we implement those in Power BI. But why do CEOs care about this? You yeah. probably wonder, why do they care? What's special about this? Why are we here trying to tell them what, <laughs> what they need to know? <laughs> exactly, what they need to know and how Power BI can help them. Well, the idea is that CEOs are increasingly their performance is tied more to pay. Yeah. And so basically if the organisation performs better, they get paid more. And we've all seen in the city there's lots of uh, fighting and arguments. Why did the CEO get this bonus and that bonus? And it's quite difficult, I think, for them to prove why they deserve this bonus. And um, so increasingly, they're becoming more data savvy as well. Yeah. They've heard about this big data thing and they've thought, right, I can get insights from this, but I really don't know where to start. So there's that. And the second thing is that, or the third thing rather, is that CEOs are increasingly accountable uh, for the organisation's performance. Yeah. And sometimes that can be very visible in the, in these, uh, in the public eye as well. So um, what do they actually need to know? Well, I've, I've gathered together, I've taught, uh, top 10 KPIs. I know what a KPI is, it's a key performance indicator. 
And what that really is, um, for people who, who haven't used it before, is a summarised metric that helps you to drive your business. You can pay, you get your actual, and yep. you get your target, and you can pay the two, right. and you see how, how well the business is performing. So it sounds really simple, but actually uh, there's a bit more to it. You have to look at the pattern uh, across the KPIs. Um, I spoke to one, uh, one of my colleagues, a um, uh, very, very great gentleman in the BI community called Donald, Donald Farmer, and Donald very jokingly told me that if it's got the word KPI in it, we shouldn't use it. I know, <laughs> yeah. You want to measure everything. <laughs> So I think it's all Peter Drucker thing about what gets measured gets managed, yeah. but it's actually a bit more subtle than that. It was, uh, you act, what it really means is what you care about, you measure. Yes. So it's not so an organisation is very much defined by what do you actually measure. Yeah, what you care focused about. as well. Yeah, so, that's right. Know, there's yeah. so many things going on in organisations. Mm. Actually, we say, guys back on the straight and narrow. That's right. And particularly in today's environment, I, I know you're very smart by technology, I am. Yeah. And I think if people start to see shiny new technology, oh, it's hard not to say, I'm going to take this big side step over here. And the CEO has got to say, no, no, I'm going to take your toys away from you because we've got a vision and we need to point towards this. And it's really hard and, and I'm very guilty of that because yeah, I love yeah. it. So I've got a few KPIs and then I'm going to show you how we're going to do those in a, in a Power BI. So I've did, done a lot of research and I tend to find these ones kept cropping up all the time. Okay. There are other ones, for example, for the Chief Marketing Officer. Yeah. They will be different marketing metrics. But I thought we'll start with the base and then if I'm very, very good, maybe Amy will invite me back right, one yeah, day. She has a follow-up talk, who knows? <laughs> That's right. Or maybe I'll just be asked not to come back. Who will see? Anyway, <laughs> we'll see how we go. So the first thing is net profit. And uh, that sounds like a really simple one, but actually, uh, when I speak to people about dashboards, it's something they forget. Yeah. Um, so it's very key. And the net profit is it's about the gross profit, but you've got the operating expenses coming off there as well. And people need to measure that, and they need to measure it over time as well, which is all about the progress amongst targets. So what that actually means is, um, are you, you might be reaching, reaching your net profit today, but is that a blip? Or is it just something that actually you're not reaching it today, but that's just because something's happened in the market that's devalued yeah, something. The expenses have just gone out, or it's, that's you true. know, yeah, timing yeah. isn't it as well, I guess. That's true. Or even getting a tax refund yes. suddenly boosts you, you know, so yeah. it could be anything. But it's very important to try and keep that long distance view where we look far into the distance. So with that, we look at revenues and revenue growth rate as well. Right. We want to understand. This is where the business was five years ago, so where is it today? Yeah. Is it doing better? Is it contracting? And there could be very good reasons for that. Or is it on track? So that's what revenue is about. Uh, how much money are we making? Is that increasing or decreasing? Expenses, I mean, every business has expenses. So uh, we need to, we can start to do some KPIs on, are we making the right expenses? Yeah. So we could be making a lot of administrative expensive expenses, and they might be and um, more than our selling expenses and that kind of doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It's a bit odd. So um, we've also got revenue per employee. That's a very simple metric. Uh, what we're trying to work out there is our total revenue uh, divided by the number of employees. There are different ways of measuring it, but it's a very simple metric. We just want to make sure that um, our employees overall are, are efficient and it's a very simple metric of doing yeah. that. Um, so that's the first five. Um, so the uh, fifth, well, sixth one, which is a very important one, I think, is employee engagement. And what that's about is really um, um, how engaged and how happy our, um, our employees. I did work beside uh, one uh, HR chief, and what he did was he would send around an email, and he'd say, send me back an emoji, a happy face or a sad face. That's all he wanted to know. He said it gave him a temperature check of yeah. the whole organisation. True. And he could check how many happy faces versus how many sad faces. Mm. Um, and he just wanted you to be honest, and he was actually a lovely guy, so if you're watching, hello, um, yeah. I wish you did that, and I thought it was such a nice thing to do. Hi, Paul. <laughs> so, so it's such a nice way to do it. We also get profit per customer. So are we max, is everything in place so we maximise our profits from our customers? Yeah. And that could be things like are we selling the right products to the right people? Are the products staying relevant? So. Um, so um, if you look at things like uh, BHS versus Betamax, which is probably people in the audience are splitting two camps, people are saying, I remember that, she's yeah. ancient. Another half are saying, I really don't know what she's talking about. So 
videos people. Videos. <laughs> so the, the thing there is that uh, Betamax was actually better technology, and if you want to if you want to tweet us about that, then that's fine. But VHS actually was a bit was did better. Yeah. So it wasn't just about the technology; it was about getting the technology out there fast, right. as quickly as possible. So another thing is um, how quickly are fulfilling our orders. Sounds really simple, but are we getting things flying off the shelves in time? Are we getting our services out there in time? And that's a really important one. So we've also got project success. Are we delivering six successful projects? And that was a consultant that's really important to me. Uh, the way that I tend to do it is um, I, I follow with, up with the customer. I try and iron out any issues as we go along. I tend to find my customers are repeat customers. Okay. So that's probably a good metric in itself. I was about to I'm say, that, that could be a metric, right? A sideline off your project success. Yes. Or you having them continue to come back to you. That's right. And sometimes I'm going to say, I'm to pass it on to someone else. Okay. I get someone else involved and it's quite hard. Uh, so the final one is downtime. How, how efficient are our, are our processes? And um, I personally use a Office 365 for everything. I use Azure. So I don't have downtime. You know, it's like yeah. all the nights. So I'm oh. happy with that because I deliver things to customers and then I will put it on uh, OneDrive for business yeah. and uh, I'm sharing it with them. And they, I've got customers at the moment, one's in Australia and I've got uh, one in the Eastern Standard Time and I've got one in the UK so they are virtually 24 hours. Do you just work all day? Yeah, I just do, continue. I <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> so I think with that, it just makes sure everything's in one OneDrive yeah. so they can all see it. So it really is about having no downtime, so I need to make sure they have what they've got. So how can Power BI, how does Power BI come into all of this? And uh, basically, very simple, which is why this has got no logos on it, we are going to keep it simple. I love it's this slide. very you simple. It to me. I was like, this is brilliant. <laughs> and that's all we need to do, is uh, okay. keep it as simple as possible. And yeah, because I love that, I live by that. You know, there's, if there's no need for complexity, then let's not introduce it. So um, now what I've got here is Power BI, and in case you don't know, it is uh, the world's best and favourite uh, data visualisation tool. Uh, it's up there with Excel, and you know yes. how the world loves Excel. Everyone you know. loves Excel. Everyone <laughs> loves Excel. You won't get people out of Excel, don't even try. Just introduce them to Power BI as well. So the, the nice thing about Power BI, I think personally, is it's all click and tick. Yeah. So you don't have to ask people to think about stuff. Now, I love reporting services, don't get me wrong, yeah. but it's not for everybody. And I've spent long hours of my life, which I will never get back, trying to teach SSRS to people who are just yeah. never going to get it. They just don't have the technical skills. But Power BI, they've got the data and they're happy. Now, there's a story about this uh, dashboard. It's all made up data. Okay. Now, when I talk about those KPIs, it looks like they're kind of um, individual units, but actually, when you put them together, they tell a story about our data. So I've shown you this overall, I'll tell you about each of the components and then I'll show you the underlying data and how we got to this. Um, now we can change the colours, we can do all sorts of things, uh, but there's a reason why I've put things in a certain way. Okay. So what we have at the very top here is the net profit. So our net profit, as at this point today, is 22.5%. So um, I'll show you the underlying data, how, how that's calculated, but that's coming from basically an accounting profit and loss. Uh, Excel spreadsheet because the world lives in Excel and that's where it is. So what we've got here is our goal and that can be our, our revenue goals. Now what we can see here is that um, our revenue is at $50,000 right. and our, our actual level is $45,000. Now I didn't put dollars on there, maybe I should have done, but um, the red actually indicates we are not meeting our revenue. Yeah. Now, I've taken a worst case scenario because people will learn more from bad things sometimes. Than they they remember the red. <laughs> yes, they remember the red, that's right. And I bet people are saying, thank goodness it's not Adventure Works. Poor old Adventure Works. I did think about using it. Oh, I know. But yeah. I, know. <laughs> I thought we'll make something a bit different. I guess the red as well. I mean, yes. I know Power BI can sit on any device, right? Yes. So if you're on your phone and you're yes. just quickly looking at your KPIs and you go, oh gosh, like, still that's red, right. still red, you know, it's that's quite. Right. Visual, isn't it? It's, that's good. I like I that. I wholeheartedly agree. And if the people are colour blind, because there'll be people saying, what colour blind can I see? I use orange if you okay. can't find. Um, I've just used red here to make a, a point. Yeah. Very often you can use orange and blue to Great do that. Advice. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's a takeaway tip. Um, if you don't have to use green and red. Sometimes you don't have to show green at all. If the point of your dashboard is simply to show 
actually that um, everything's okay, then maybe you don't need to show it because maybe your CEO just wants to see what's wrong. Who do I need to go and hit in the head to make something happen? I need to know red, I don't care about green. Okay. And I do have uh, CEOs who will say that to me. They'll say, just give me five numbers and the ones I've got, the one that's broken, yeah. I'll go and talk to somebody. Yeah. And they give you that look where you think, I'm really glad the person you're talking to is not me. Um, so I'll just give you the number of secrets from the, the trenches here. Isn't it? <laughs> I know, this is great. I'll just go and drop the data, I'll just drop that bomb and go. Yeah. Like, my job is done. Here's your insights. <laughs> so, Very good. What we have here is customer satisfaction by year. Okay. You can see it's clearly plummeting. I know. 82.82% just now. What we don't have in a, is actually any metrics on the, on the y-axis. I was about to say, I wonder what, I'm assuming maybe that top bit is right up there in sort of 90%, is it or something? Yeah, so what I've done here, and I'll make this a bit bigger so you see it, is you don't have to always add in the y-axis, but what I've done here is just to make a point about this. Mm. And there's a red and green uh, to make yeah. you need a point about that. Um, so what we see here is that we have our axes here. So we've got it start, actually goes up to 89%, down to 82%. Now there's a tip about the y-axis I'd like to, like to give you. There's a whole debate in data visualization, believe it or not. Do you show, what do you show in the x-axis, in yeah. the y-axis? Is it, should it be zero to 100, so you have that ceiling? Or do you just contract the, uh, the y-axis so that it just gives you a band of data? Now the guideline, which um, I was asked Stephen Few about it, if you don't know who Stephen Few is, I recommend you read his stuff, look at his blog and perceptualedge.com. If you can attend one of his training sessions, do that, I've heard him speak and he's not just a teacher, he's a practitioner and it's a performance, I mean I just walk away and I'm blown away by everything, so <laughs> if you can do that then you should, definitely should. So the thing is that if you're showing the data to somebody who knows it, it's alright to contract the y-axis and yes. just show a band because that person's familiar with the data. But if the person, your target, is not familiar with the data and they are just um, coming to it fresh, maybe a member of the public, then what you should do then is show 0 to 100 because people tend to assume that 0 to 100 is in place if they don't know the data. Yeah. So, um, and that drop might have got really drastic right. as well and actually it's only a couple of percent. Like, yes. But if you were coming to it fresh, you might be like, oh my God, what happens? Like, That's yeah. right. And it's, I don't know if you saw an article yesterday in the Washington Post, but was, there was a brilliant article about how Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton oh. display their data. Oh, interesting. So, yeah, yes. I, wouldn't, I don't want to go there in case there's any Americans watching, yes. but if there is, uh, just read the article, make up your own mind. But it was very, very interesting how people right. can do things with data. Insights. Absolutely, yeah. very interesting. Gosh. So I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can tweet the link after because it's really good. <laughs> But so that's what I've done here. So it does look quite an exaggerated drop. Yeah. Uh, and that's why, because we've contracted the y-axis, so it's 82% to 89%. And I put the number there just because, again, we're just looking at metrics and we just want to see what the number Get actually straight, is. Get isn't it? Almost. Exactly. Like what is happening right now? Yeah, I love that we're putting it. Yes, that's right. Um, that's a good way to put it. I'm going to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so what we have here is revenue growth. Now this, um, what we see here is the... I've put in a minimum value of minus one, okay. and a positive value is actually one, which you may be not be able to see there. I'll just see if we can make that a wee bit bigger, just so you can see. Now this is called a bullet chart. Right. And this was again devised by Stephen Few. And now the idea is then when you use gauges, and I'll show you a gauge. So say for example, I take this one, and I turn that very quickly into a gauge. Yeah. So that's, uh, uh, that, that's a little metric there, it's actually expense type. And what we see there is that the expense type is split into two. So one half of the expense type is administrative expenses and the other half is selling expenses. We can't really see it very well in that gauge. But the thing with gauges is people don't gauge area very well and they don't gauge angles very well. They're much better at straight lines yes. and judging the length of those. Um, so what we find there is uh, so it's much easier for people to judge, um, I should show you here actually, uh, yeah. to judge these because they are straight lines than it is to judge the area here. It's more simple here because it's only split into two, but if you start to add in lots of slices it becomes harder to read. So um, that's why um, we have got this bullet chart. It's using straight lines and it's trying to work out is it um, above or below a certain target. Yeah. 
So our target is actually, uh, our target should be closer to the one on the right hand side. Basically we want our revenue growth to be higher. We can see it's hovering just above zero yeah. at this point here. Um, so that's telling us our, our revenue is not growing. So that tells our CEO we need to do something. Um, so that could be looking at cutting expenses, it could be at, um, working out why employees not happy, or looking at products to say, well, actually, we are not actually meeting our um, products uh, or making them successful as we should be. We're not permutating or shifting or pivoting. So what we have done here is the expense type. Now, I've just made these one colour. Um, but we could change the colour in that, so I'm going to use data colours here. Now, I'm going to make the top one slightly light to blue so we can see that better. Oh, the bottom one, rather. So, uh, so um, what I'd like to say here is that we have used a heat map mm -hmm. um, just for two items and it gives the CEO a quick, a quick gauge, really, if you want to call it a gauge, uh, yeah. to say, um, how are our expenses looking? We have a lump of expenses. Some of those you can't get round. But some of them, it seems odd that our administrative expenses are the same as our selling expenses. Yeah, literally 50-50. Yeah, 50-50. Like, mm. so I guess that would be a good one, would it, for like a, a allotment of time? Yes. So my team at the moment, we are like crazy busy as always. Oh, yes, and too. our manager has been asking us, can, can you let us know you know which parts of our KPIs or our scorecard yes. are you working on? What's where are we all contributing to? Are we spread enough sort of mm. thing? And actually, it could be an interesting one to look at it like that. Yes. Like, where is our time broken down? Um, yeah. you know, is there a big chunk being dedicated to one thing, and yeah. actually something down here is being neglected? I feel like that could be That's true. One. Yeah, it's a great idea, especially for as in a more consulting type service yeah. uh, which you're offering really, it's good to see where is the time going because I spend too much time um, doing a lot of admin tasks, yeah. so I was taking up, I was doing all the accounting myself and everything so I've actually hired a lady to help me with that, oh, good. so yeah. I'm really happy she's coming on board and that'll be in December, her name's Jennifer as well, so two women doing uh, Power Pivot and doing Power BI and all sorts <laughs> of things, what could go wrong right? Oh, uh <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> it's going to be excellent. It's just helping me so much already. So I'm just so, so glad. So that it's um, so but that was me. That was about me looking at my time and saying yeah. actually that's not productive. That's just I can get someone else to do that to look after that for me. In the meantime, um, Jenny will get trained on all Power BI or Power Pivot, all that stuff. Great stuff using my data and my customers' data. So it's all about growing people as well. So I'm, I'm super excited very, about that. Very, very good. Yeah, so I, I'm super excited about that. So um, this one is actually about our revenue per employee. Now okay. what we see here is in 2015, yeah. um, you can see actually our revenue is all, is gone down, uh, is three quarters of what it was previously. So that starts to tell us that our em the employees are starting to struggle a little bit somewhere, something's chewing up their time, yeah. which is making them less productive. So just to come back to a point I was I mentioned earlier, the KPIs themselves on their own give you a lot of information, but it's about st telling a story with your data so that you can say, well actually we put these things together and they are all telling us something about the organisation and it's telling us all the same thing. So when we put this together, we see here our expenses look a bit odd, there's something wrong there. A lot of administrative expenses, which is not expecting, that could be associated with the fact that our revenue is going down per employee. The time might be getting chewed up, maybe it's a new timesheet system, or something like that, it could be anything. Yeah. We would have to talk to them. And then growing the revenue as well, the revenue is not growing, probably as a consequence of the fact that our employee productivity is fell by 25% in one year. I mean, that's a big flag straight away. Yeah. So there's a lot of interesting things there. Just in one, so when a dashboard or one canvas, and I think that's what Power BI gives you. It's very easy to change this. Mm -hmm. And one thing I would say, well, it's in my head, is you see we've got orange here, yep. and we've got yellow here. Now, I put that in deliberately, but what tends to happen is that you, um, people see the same colour, and they assume it means the same thing. So um, association, like, yeah. yeah. They look at it, because we use colour to group things all the time, if you think of like a Rubik's Cube, yeah. we, you, you want to get all the right colours on the right <laughs> sides. <Yeah. laughs> uh, and you instinctively pick it up and you think, all right then, um, I know what to do with this. All of these should be the same colour, so yeah. the red should be one side of blue and yellow. And we categorise by colour very effectively. So I think um, when we do Power BI, it's very much the same thing. So uh, what yeah. we do with this one is um, this is actually um, a funnel chart, which I've changed a little bit. Got the data colours there, and I would just change that. I'm just going to change it to purple just now. Okay. 
Yeah. And the reason I've done that is to distinguish it from everything else on the page. So what we have here is our underlying data. And this is um, this data I've actually taken from uh, the US government website. It's their customer satisfaction data from the Social Security Administration. All I needed was data uh, just to get, get us up and running. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I just took the data and then I made it into to look like this. But we can actually do this in Power BI using Power Query. Uh -huh. I'll show you how we do that. I'll take you quickly through the data, first of all. So we've got a net profit there. So this would be the equivalent of our um, of our accounting spreadsheet. We've got sales, we've got uh, our returns inwards. Now, it's all in one column, but actually it probably makes more sense when we see it like this. Uh, we yeah. can see our gross profits here. So that's how much profit we're making. We start to see our expenses, which are reflected on our, our, our Power BI dashboard. Yeah. Those are summed. Uh, that gives us uh, 500. We've got a uh, 50, um, 50k. The lesser our income tax of 5k, these uh, just made up figures, gives us 45,000 uh, as our net profit. And uh, net profit is just simply calculated by this here net profit ratio, and that's a very, very important one. Oops. And I got it from this uh, website here, so if you're interested, you can go and have a look accountingformanagement.org. It's just a website that I happen to use because I found it. And really useful. So, and then we look at our revenue. So I just took this data. Now the revenue is an interesting one actually. Um, what we're trying to do here is, um, hopefully if I double click and see that, what I've done is taken the last year and the first year okay. and divide them. So what we see is, um, so I've got, um, I think it's 20 million there, uh, divided by 10 million, so I can't see that properly. Um, <laughs> I've divided them, and when you divide those together, that gives us, uh, gives us a growth of two. Yeah. So basically, five years ago, we, we, our revenue was double what it was. So we've got an exponential here, and that helps us to work out the, the trend yeah. uh, towards our revenue growth. So our revenue growth is almost at one, but not quite, and we saw that on our uh, Power BI chart earlier. So when we start to look at that, we take the um, we take the exponent, we we take one away from it, then we multiply it by 100, and that gives us our value of our revenue growth. Okay. So we've got our data there, and um, so these are quite commonly used accounting metrics, yeah. uh, which filter up into the into the CEO. So now what we can do is start to look at the right hand side here. We've got our fields. And these are coming from Power Query. So what we can do is we can edit the query. And this gives us some of the manipulations that we've been doing behind the scenes. Ah. So what I've done here is net profit after tax. I've taken away the net sales from it. And then I've added in another calculated field here, which is the expected profit after tax. So with Power Query, I can start to implement some of these uh, metrics. So I've got the number of employees here. And when that gives, starts to give us our revenue generation per employee, I've got the revenue and I've got the number of employees. So uh, we've got our revenue there for 2015. We can see our employee and the levels have gone down. So that kind yeah. of indicates unhappy employees. Yeah. And we can see that in our Power BI a spreadsheet here that they are less happy, so people are leaving. So we start to tell a lot, just yeah. actually from uh, a lot of number, a lot of little data really. So um, we've got our tables here with our expenses and basically all I've done is use data which is already in Excel yeah. and load it up together um, so that we can get this Power BI spreadsheet. So to summarise, because um, I, I probably just... <laughs> yes, <laughs> no, no, it's <laughs> awesome information, that's, that's all really, really good. good. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. So just to summarise, um, I've just very commonly used accounting metrics um, such as revenue growth and uh, uh, some of revenue by employee. There are other ones which I've very briefly touched on, but I knew we wouldn't have time to talk about them today. Uh, so if you're interested in more information, look me up on Twitter, Jen Stirrup, or look me up on LinkedIn as well, because I, I take emails that way. So Jen Stirrup, and uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much, Jen. Thank you for joining us. Loads of insight there, and hopefully people will go and have a look at Power BI, and you know you made them feel comfortable with the Excel piece as well. Yes. So thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Thanks a lot, everyone. Uh, join us in 15 minutes for another session.